Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. This tutorial covers the basics of panel ARDL. So why do we even want to engage in a panel data analysis? This is because the main interest is the group and not in the individual units in the group, which means that very little information is lost by taking a panel data perspective. Also, the use of panel rather than the time series data not only increases the total number of observations and their variation, but also reduces the noise coming from the individual time series. Therefore, heteroscedasticity is not always an issue in panel data analysis. Panel data analysis is also best suited where data availability is an issue, particularly for developing economies where short time spans for variables are rampant due to insufficient data that can fit time series regressions. Also in panel data, there is heterogeneity or differences among the units in the panel. Panel estimation techniques also takes this heterogeneity into account by allowing for subject specific variables. Lastly, panel data is suited for studying dynamic changes due to repeated cross-sectional observations in the sample. Panel data analysis involves using a combination of cross-section and time series observations for the analysis. In such a case, N is the number of groups, and the groups can be firms, industries, countries, individuals, schools, stocks, cars, groups can be anything, and T represents the number of years. And there are different types of panel data variants. We have the long panel, where you have a large N and a large T. We have a short panel, where we have a large N and a small T. We also have the heterogeneous panel, where N can be large or small, but the T in this case is large. Overall, N must be less than T for heterogeneous panel. We also have static panel, where you only include exogenous variables as regressors. While for dynamic panels, you can include the lagged dependent variable as a regressor. Therefore, this tutorial is strictly on heterogeneous dynamic panel data modeling, also known as panel ARDL. Now, I'm going to outline some basic steps to estimation. I'm assuming that you have a study to conduct or you have a manuscript to write. And if you want to use the panel data um, framework, how do you go about estimating your analysis? So that is the approach I'm going to use in this tutorial. The first step will be that you specify the model. The second step is that you have to describe the data. The third step, you have to perform correlation analysis. Step four, perform unit root test. Step five, determine the optimal lag for the model. Step six is optional, perform co-integration test. Step seven is very important. You have to perform the Hosman 1978 test. Step eight, now go ahead to estimate the model. Step nine is also optional. If it's part of your argument, perform causality test. And lastly, which is also optional, is diagnostics test. Now, let me explain all these steps in a uh, little detail. On the screen is the generalized ARDL PQQQ model. The P represents the lags for the dependent variable, while the Q represents the lags for the regressors. Every other characteristics here are all explained in the notes. But the most important representation is this. It is the error correction model which is the re-parameterized ARDL model. And the error correction model comes with a difference operator for the dependent variable. And you can also observe that the lag length is now a P minus one and a Q minus one lag. The moment you are differencing the ARDL model, you are going to lose a lag. So the lag length is now P minus one and Q minus one. Theta here represents the speed of adjustment for the group. And in this um, bracket is the error correction term, which represents the long run information in the model. These are the short run parameters to be estimated. So these are the short run coefficients. So it is the error correction model that is mostly important for you to run your panel ARDL 
model. Step two says describe the data. What do you have to do? You have to show and explain the features of each variable in the model. And if possible, you have to show how they relate to one another in the group in order to spoil a comparative analysis. Step three, perform correlation analysis by showing that the regressors do not have exact perfect or linear dependence on one another. In other words, you must avoid multicollinearity. Step four, perform unit through test. In order to ascertain that no variable is integrated of order two, you can perform either the first or second generation unit through test. Step five, now determine the optimal lag for the model by using the unrestricted model and any information criterion of your choosing. Decide on the choice of lag for each group per variable, then from that, choose the most common lag for each variable to represent the lags for the model. By the time we take an example, you will understand how to perform this procedure. Step six is consideration test. Like I said, is optional. You can perform the Pedroni or the Westerlund test. But if you are assuming long run homogeneity, you can skip this uh, procedure. This is because cointegration is ascertained from the statistical significance of the long run coefficients and the error correction term. So you can skip step six. Step seven is important. You have to perform the Hausmann test, which is to test the null hypothesis of homogeneity through the Hausmann type test based on the comparison between the mean group and the pooled mean group. Your decision criteria will be to reject the null hypothesis if the probability value is lower than 0.05. Step eight, now go ahead to estimate the model. Based on the outcome of the Hausmann test, for instance, if the test favors the PMG estimator, run the test, observe the statistical significance of the coefficients, particularly the wrong run coefficients, and the size of the group specific error correction term and the adjustment parameter and the short run coefficients. Go ahead then to interpret your results. Step nine is also optional. You can perform causality tests if it is included in your argument. You can perform either the grandeur, the world, or the weak exogeneity test. Like I said, it's optional. This is because causality can be inferred from the error correction term, which shows you joint causality, or the long run coefficients, which shows you long run causality, or short run coefficients, which shows you short run causality, or combination of error correction term, long and short run coefficients, which gives you evidence of strong causality in the model. If you don't know how to perform causality tests, I have videos on that. Please watch them so that you can know exactly what to do. Lastly, perform some diagnostics. Again, this step is optional, but I will advise that you do it. However, the diagnostics must not be on the panel, but on the groups in the sample so that you can compare the relative results. Now, let's look at the main group estimator. It is proposed by Petran and Smith 1995. It is less informative. This is because it averages the data by calculating the coefficient means. It also estimates n separate regressions. So if you have 10 farms in your sample, it's going to estimate 10 different regressions for you. It examines the distribution of the estimated coefficients across the groups. It produces consistent estimates of the averages of the parameters. It also shows that the parameters are freely independent across the groups. It does not recognize the fact that certain parameters may be the same across the groups. So the main group estimator is indeed less informative because if you are running a panel data analysis, you want to see some level of semblance among the groups that make up the sample. Another estimator we can consider is the dynamic fixed effects estimator. This estimator sh shows you uh, that the intercepts differ across the groups that the slope coefficients and error variances are identical. It also allows the dynamic specification to differ across the groups. Now let's look at the pooled main group estimator. It is proposed by Pesaran, Sheen and Smith, 1999. It is an intermediate estimator between the main group and the dynamic fixed effects estimator. It involves both pooling and averaging of the sample. It allows the intercepts, short run coefficients and error variances to differ freely across the groups. That is, all these ones are heterogeneous, but the long run coefficients are homogeneous. That is, they are the same, which is very good. It generates consistent estimates of the mean of the short run coefficients by taking 
the simple average of individual unit coefficients. Now let's look at mean group and pool mean group estimator. Number one, the mean group estimator provides consistent estimates of the mean of the long run coefficients. But this will be inefficient if the assumption of slope homogeneity holds. The pooled mean group estimator, on the other hand, is consistent and efficient under the assumption that the slope homogeneity holds in the long run. I will explain more by the time we take an example. Now, how do you decide between the mean group or the pooled mean group estimator? You have to perform the Hausmann test. The null hypothesis is that the mean group and the pooled mean group estimates are not significantly different. That is, the pooled mean group is more efficient under the null hypothesis. Against the alternative that the null is not true. Your decision criteria will be not to reject the null hypothesis and use the pooled mean group if the p-value is greater than 0.05. But you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the mean group if the p-value is lower than 0.05. Deciding between the mean group or the DFE estimator, perform the husband test. The null hypothesis is that the mean group and the DFE estimates are not significantly different. And under the null, the DFE is more efficient. Against the alternative that the null hypothesis is not true. So what would be your decision criteria? If the p-value is greater than 0.05, you cannot reject the null hypothesis. So you use the DFE to estimate the model. But if the p-value is lower than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the main group estimator. Deciding between the DFE or the pooled main group is almost the same thing. You perform the husband test. The null hypothesis in this case will be that the DFE and the PMG estimates are not significantly different and under the null, the PMG is more efficient against the alternative that the null hypothesis is not true. Decision criteria, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, you cannot reject the null hypothesis, thereby you use the PMG to estimate the model. But if the p-value is lower than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the DFE estimator. On the screen are the references I used to prepare this video. Please read up. I've, I've always said it that you cannot um, replace video tutorials with reading. You must read to understand video tutorials on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Support my channel. If you have not done so, subscribe, share my videos, and share my links. Please don't go away. In the next videos, I'm going to show you practical examples by taking a data and running through the basic steps of panel ARDL.